Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Tomcat Stitchery. I'm Whitney and I'm back for another work from home module sew along video. Okay, so we're getting into the reveal things, um, which is very exciting. I've been sewing up a storm. I hope you guys have been too. Um, and don't forget, I've, we've got some prizes for this. We've got a $50 voucher to um, Screech Owl Fine Fabrics, as well as a one month subscription to In a Haystack, which is a digital sewing subscription pack. Um, about said box, but it's it's digital, so <laughs> not the actual box. Um, for one winner that'll just be randomly chosen, you just have to um, make sure that you post on the hashtag, the work from home module will sew along, I'll put that right here, um, by October 31st, midnight, Eastern Standard Time here in the U.S., um, and I'll pick a randomly pick a winner on November 1st, and you just have to have a picture on Instagram of your six or seven pieces. Um, we just love to see all that. So that's all it takes to win or to enter. And um, yeah, we'll randomly pick someone on Sunday the 1st. I think that's right. I think that's a Sunday. <laughs> anyway, let's get into tops today. So as a reminder, you don't have to make all your six or seven pieces. Um, you can definitely add pre-made things that you've got in there, ready to wear items you just really love or things you've thrifted. Um, and I talked about thrifting last week a little bit. So um, yeah, just remember, don't get overwhelmed. This is a very easy process. I'm trying to break this down as easily as possible because I found it is just a great way to build a more cohesive and sustainable closet. So um, let's get started. So before we get into the tops, I want to talk about my body model. So I was gifted um, uh, my body model, which is you put in your um, measurements, there's a whole bunch of measurements, and you basically get a personalized croquis, and it looks like this. I may have to show, oh, that's really hard to see, isn't it? I'll show some close-ups. <laughs> um, a personalized croquis, and then you have, you can print off a whole bunch of different um, pages. For instance, you can print off these wonderful project pages that have your front and your back. Again, that's really hard to see. You can choose a dark line as well. I chose the pale gray because I want those to disappear when the clothes are on it. Um, and then just a front where you can take notes for your um, patterns. I'm sorry, these are all show close-ups of these. But I really wanted to show you, I worked on um, a little a 9x9. Nine nine. These are the two bottoms I plan to make and my overalls that I plan to make, the denim ones, although I'm going to make the um, leopard print ones too, I think, um, probably first actually. And then my three tops that I am planning on making um, and just kind of some different outfit combinations that are there. So I'll show a close up of that as well. Um, it's just a really fun and great tool. I wanted to highlight that a little bit because it's a really fun and great tool to use to plan out your projects. You don't have to be great at drawing. I am not great at drawing, um, but it's just kind of you can play around with proportion a little bit easier because that is exactly your body in a 2D form. You can really play around with proportion and kind of what makes you, you know, if you like the longer hems, shorter hems, if you like things tucked, not tucked. Um, it really kind of helps visualize that a little bit. And I find it to be also a lot of fun just to kind of sketch and play around with colors and that sort of thing. So just wanted to throw that out there first. And um, hopefully I've shown you actually up close of what those look like so you can see them a little bit better. All right, so for today, I am showing you just my three tops that are going to be in my module. Now, with these, um, instead of, I, I, I want to wait and pair everything together at the very end. So for these, I'm actually paired all three of these with my newest Love Notions um, pattern release, which are the Glissando, Glissando um, pants and skirt. And I made the, um, I was a tester, and I made the cropped pant version. Um, I didn't get a chance to put out an actual video on this though because uh, just the way it got pushed, the release of this got pushed a couple of times just because she wanted the pattern to be as perfect as possible and then it was just, it, I couldn't, didn't have time to like do a video and stuff like that to get that in there um, with other stuff that I had planned and already um, committed to doing. So. I'm going to be showing these all off with my Glissandros, mostly because these, I made these in a color that will go seamlessly with the rest of my module. Again, I'm all about making a very cohesive closet. Um, my watch is going off. So um, anyway, that's what I'm pairing these with. You've not seen these yet. So these are my new um, Glissando and, am I saying that right? Glissando, yeah, 
glissando pants. Um, there's also a skirt option for that pattern. I will leave a link to it down below. Um, I love these. I made these in a heavyweight cotton 12. This is one of the fabrics that I softened with the Coke. Um, if you follow along on the daily vlogs, um, or the weekly vlogs, I guess. Lo absolutely love these. And actually, this has been tweaked quite a bit since I made this pair. This was like version 3, and I think the final version was like version 5 or 6. So this has been tweaked a little bit since I made these. She's taken out some of the excess in the hip a little bit. Um, so you'll notice that... I have just a little bit of excess fabric at the hip. These are a size 8 that I then, which is um, what I made for my hips, and then I actually graded out to a 12 for my waist. Um, so yes, those are that pattern. Um, so that's what I'm going to be pairing those with, and you guys just haven't seen that yet. So I wanted to talk about it a little bit, and then also there will be a link down to that one, as well as the rest of these three down below. Okay, first top. Let's talk about the Lisa & Co. Classic Shirt. Oh my gosh, guys. I love this pattern. So this is your classic button-up shirt pattern. Um, I have used this gorgeous rayon. Um, it's a textured rayon. You see that texture in there? It, it did not press well. If you'll notice, the um, tower placket video was this sleeve. There's the tower placket. Well, maybe. There's the tower placket. Um, the fabric did not press very well, which is odd for rayon, but it did not press very well. Um, however, it was a very forgiving fabric because it has texture and kind of is spongy a little bit. Your uh, stitches just kind of sunk into it. So it was a very forgiving fabric. Um, I would definitely use it again. Um, you know, because again, it didn't press great, but I was it pressed well enough that I was able to get very precise points and stuff on my tower plackets in the end. So very pleased with this. Um, yeah, the fabric's just gorgeous. I love the color. I bought chocolate brown buttons to go with it on the front. And look, I did the back part of my buttonholes in kind of this rust color, this orange, because um, I thought I was going to change it. It was in the bobbin already. And I thought, you know what? Because I never button my shirt all the way up. I leave it open. I'm like, that's kind of a fun pop of color. Just a little bit to show. And that's also part of my all of my um, colors that I'm going to be working with this fall. I'm going to be throwing some orange in once we're through this module. Um, love this. Absolutely love this shirt. So I would definitely, um, this, does, this pattern does come in cup sizes, and so I made a size 8D, and um, it fits me fantastic. I do, I could probably do like a half of an inch of a narrow shoulder adjustment, although to be honest, this is not a fitted um, button-up shirt. It's a little looser. I mean, it's not oversized, I wouldn't say, but it's a looser fit one. Um, so I actually don't mind that it comes off my shoulder a little bit. Now, if I were doing one that maybe had more darts in like on the back or in the front a little bit, I actually, I hate front waist darts on button-up shirts. I just, cause that's where I carry my weight. <laughs> I usually omit those, but I do like, um, back waist darts, like fisheye darts in the back. I think that makes a very nice, um, shirt. Um, for more of a fitted shirt that you're really wanting to tuck in. I mean, it's got bust darts. And this shirt also comes with two different pocket styles. I opted not to put, I hardly ever put pockets on my shirt, my button-up shirts. It just, it's putting things right where I don't want attention, right on the boobs. And I just don't like extra added details there. Um, so I did omit those, but I, I absolutely love this. I'm still on the lookout for more of a fitted button-up shirt. And there is a recital shirt that Lisa & Co. has that I'd be interested maybe in trying. Um, I also have a couple of itch to stitch patterns I'm kind of interested in trying. Uh, the only downside to this pattern is that the way the side seam, the way she has you do the side seam and that finishes off into the hem, I'm going to change that just a little bit to where I can finish off the side seam and then do the hem. Because right now it has you just stopping on the side seam because it just kind of goes into one. Um, and then you have to clip into the side seam in order to do the hem. And I'm just not crazy about that finish. So I think I will. It's a very simple, just a little, um, I'm just going to kind of go in on the seam allowance so that I can finish that off straight. Um, but yeah, it's a fantastic shirt pattern. It has all the classic details on it. Collar stand, collar. It has a sewn on placket on the one side. Uh, great. Again, the cup sizing is fantastic. A really beautiful cuff that kind of, that curves there. Um, it's really pretty. It's just a back yoke. It's got these two little um, pleats here on the side. You could actually, if you wanted to, you could merge those into one pleat in the center back if you wanted to. Um, pleats are pretty easy to play around with, but I love this shirt. I mean, it's a, it's my dark neutral. It's going to be worn so much this fall. I'm probably going to wonder how I lived without it. <laughs> 
So that is my top one. Very excited about it. So easy to dress up and down. If you saw Friday's video, I did my woven joggers, and um, I think that this would be so cute. I've so seen a lot of Pinterest inspiration pictures of button-up shirts with um, like elastic waist joggers, uh, dressing it up a little bit with like my orange loafers. I think that that would be a fantastic outfit and a great way to still be casual, but also put together as well. All right, next one. This was the top, the great debate. <laughs> Actually, same fabric. This is the Monroe um, Turtleneck by Tasuti Fabrics. This comes in just three, it's three sizes, but it, it's a wide, it's a fairly wide range because it's very, very oversized. I made the size two. I actually ended up, I mean, look how boxy it is. You can see it's basically just a big box rectangle. Um, and then it's got a skinny sleeve on it that are, this is drop shoulder. Um, I made the size two. I ended up taking, I think, an inch out of the sleeves. Um, so they have lengthened and shortened lines and, I, and it, they're like split where you can lengthen and shorten in that area. And I literally just took all the, the length out there. So it was one inch at the sleeves and two inch at the body. Although once I made the shirt, I tried it on and took another two inches out of the body. Um, so I took four inches out of the body on this one and I think that it hits me right where I want it to. I don't want too much excess because I'm gonna tuck this, um, half tuck it and that kind of thing most of the time. Although if you wanted something loose to wear over leggings, you could definitely, it's definitely long enough. Um, I guess that depends on your height, I'm only 5'2". Also, I was worried about this being too boxy because I am busty, but this is a rayon rib knit, which is very, very drapey, and I think it is perfect. I'm glad I went ahead and made it in this fabric. Anything with any more body, I think it would be too boxy on me. But because this is so drapey, I, it just ticks all the boxes. Um, let's see, I finished off the hems with my cover stitch machine. I used my um, double stick tape for the bottom, so there's a beautiful one inch hem there at the bottom. Um, what else to say? I just really love it. I love this color. Um, I think it's going to be just worn a ton. I'm glad I decided to go for it. I did end up buying the, um, So House 7 Toaster Sweater Pattern, the, the dual, as I do really want to make that for myself, um, at some point this fall, and I think it'll be good for my daughter as well, both versions for both of us. Um, so yes, I did end up buying that, but that just isn't going to go into this module. That'll be coming in later, um, as we go about, but highly recommend this, and it's a free pattern. So if you're interested in trying it, you can go to their website. It's absolutely free, um, to download and print off, and yeah, it's a good one. I was very shocked. Also, hopefully I'm showing you footage of me actually in these so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, and then for my final top. Oh my gosh, I love this one so much. This is the Mimi Woven Blouse Spice um, Style Art Patterns. It is basically just a very loose um, show, or, uh, woven top. It has the drop shoulder as well. There's the shoulder seam there. Um, it's got, you know, it's just like your woven t-shirt. So it's got just a split in the back with a hook and eye to go over your head, although the um, neckline is nice and, and large. You could probably, I could probably get it on over my head without even undoing that. Um, maybe not. I kind of have a big head, but <laughs> the neckline's finished with self-made bias tape. Um, it's got a nice curved hem at the bottom. There are no bust starts, so it's pretty free flowing. So you would definitely want to use a very drapey fabric if you've got larger boobs, which I do. But the wonderful part of this is this beautiful sleeve detail. You see the, the shearing that's there? It, it, this, it's just beautiful. I just think it's a fun little detail. It gets a little lost in this fabric only because, um, it's such a beautiful print. Um, but I think, I mean, it's just a really fun detail. So you do tucks first, and then you shear over the tucks. So the shearing is the elastic in the, um, in the bobbin. But yeah, so it hits like a bracelet length on me. I did not shorten the sleeves any because I actually made a size eight up top. And then, um, I've done this before on videos. So I did a size eight, but I took the size 12 armhole and put that at the size eight and then pivoted it. So I traced the size 12 armhole and then I took that trace to put it at the eight um, shoulder point and then swung it out until it met the size 12 at the, at the side seam, at the underarm. And then, um, so basically it's an eight in the neck and an eight in the shoulders and then it grades out to a 12 when you get to the underarm, which is what I needed for the bust. Um, and I think that that worked great. And then I did a size 12 in the sleeve because I used the size 12 arms eye curve. Does that make sense? <laughs> anyway, this is another one that would need a, a very drapey fabric. I've used this gorgeous rayon chalet with this beautiful Jaguar toile print. This is from Stylemaker Fabrics, as is the chocolate brown. Um, the rib knit came from um, Zinx Fabrics. I got it in their uh, clearance section. I paid like $1.74 a yard because I bought the whole rest of the bolt. But this is a beautiful rayon. It is not 
sometimes rayons can be really light and they shift and go off grain super easily. This is like a nice, um, I mean it's lightweight but it's not super flimsy and lightweight. So it did not shift on me very badly. I was able to sew with it really easily and the bias binding worked really well. I love, I put a, this guy right center, front center, a sitting um, Jaguar. I mean, you've got him like pouncing down here. I just love this. I love the colors. I just think the print is beautiful. And you know, this type of top works well, so there's no darts um, and no seaming. It's great for that kind of a print because you don't have to break up any of the print elements. So just a really wonderful, I think this is gonna be so cute under the overalls and with both of the bottoms that I'm currently making. So there you have it. Those are my three tops for my work from home module sew along. All three very comfortable, very easy to wear around the house, but still look polished and put together. Um, yeah, so I'm very excited about sharing my bottoms with you next week, and I'll be sharing those with a different top because I'm don't. i not going to show you everything together until the very end, so you're going to have to wait till the very end to see everything together. Um, I just, that's fun. <laughs> But it helps that I'm making things also in these color families as I'm sewing, um, so everything still goes together. All right, guys, that is all I've got for this week. I can't wait to see the tops that you guys are starting to make. I'm enjoying seeing all the plans and stuff pop up on Instagram, so keep that coming. I hope you all have a wonderful week, and Friday I've got a pattern review for you. So it's a new to me pattern company that sent me a pattern, um, and I have made it up, and I've got that review for you on Friday. It's a good dress. It's a good one. So I will see you guys then, or tomorrow in the, um, obviously, the weekly vlog, but I will see you guys on Friday for that, and then um, Sunday for more Sew Along Fun. I hope you guys have a wonderful Tuesday, and I will see you next time. Bye!